Hello everyone, welcome to a new video on the Eldenwood Craft channel. My name's Emma and I'm a knitter and the owner of Eldenwood Craft where I make handmade project bags and accessories for other makers. Today is Friday the 28th of January. It's my first video of 2023, so a very warm welcome to you. I hope you've been well over the last few weeks um, since I last recorded. <coughs> Excuse me, frog in my throat. Um, I'm looking to up my game a little bit this year with this channel. I would like to get more regular with my recording schedule, so my plan is to record every two weeks. Um, probably on a Friday and have it uploaded for the weekend um, and hopefully that will make it a little less daunting to have to come back not have to but you know you know what I mean um, when you've got a lot to talk about recording an hour or so's worth of podcast is quite a lot so I really want to make my episodes shorter and more focused on a couple of projects so what I'm going to do today is talk about everything that I finished since I last recorded um, and then show you the projects that I'm going to focus on for the next couple of weeks and then when I come back I'll talk about those and then look at what I'm going to work on in the next couple of weeks. Does that make sense? Um, we'll give it a go and see how it goes um, and yeah. Um, what else do I need to tell you? Uh, all the information that you will need about me and the video um, and the links and all that sort of thing will be in the description box underneath the video. If it's not there and you need some information, drop me a line, leave a comment, um, however you want to get in touch with me. Um, thank you for your comments on the last video. I had loads of um, really good recommendations for men's sweaters. Just a little update on um, Dennis's flax sweater. I told you in the last episode I wasn't overly happy with it, um, but he's wearing it and um, in fact he's wearing it today. He's up, he's up in that room um, working in his sweater um, and he wears it quite a lot actually and he's very open to um, more hand-knit sweaters so I will definitely be making him something else this year. I'm recording today in my kitchen. I cannot sit in the room next to Dennis and <laughs> talk to you. Um, I just feel too self-conscious um, and this room today gives me the best light. So perhaps this will be my regular um, recording spot for the foreseeable future. Um, the other thing that I've got to talk about today, and we'll start with that, is the prize winners for the very last Make Nine um, that I'm going to run. At least, I'm not running it this year. We'll see. We'll see about future years. But um, yesterday, I drew two winners randomly by random number generator. One for the quarter four finished objects and one from the um, the entrants who had completed their full make nine. What I'll do, I will contact the winners directly um, in the next week or so um, just to let you know um, about prizes and we can sort prizes out and that sort of thing. But let me give you the information. So quarter four, um, there were nearly 30 finished objects from the Ravelry group and from the Instagram um, hashtags. There were 14 pairs of socks, six sweaters, two hats, two Sophie scarves, two pairs of mittens, and one of, like, there was one cow, one shawl, one tank top, that sort of thing. Um, and the winner was post 124, who um, submitted a pair of mittens on that post. And that winner was Asterid, who is also known as Patricia, Patrizia in real life. And Patrizia is in Portugal. Um, so congratulations, Patrizia. I will contact you, as I said, and um, we'll discuss a prize. And then from the final completed Make Nine grids, well done to everyone who managed that. There were quite a few of you this year. Um, but the winner, drawn randomly um, is someone who's been a um, a dedicated make niner I think um, you've been you've been participating for a few years so thank you very much um, and that winner is drumroll scully bun bun 
So well done. And Scully, I think you won a prize earlier this year as well. So it's been your lucky year. Um, I will contact you as well and we will organise a prize for you. Um, just to say thank you ever so much to everyone who's taken part over the years. Um, I haven't been the greatest host, I will hold my hands up to that, but um, it's been really good and I know a lot of you have found it very motivating um, in terms of getting projects done that you really wanted to work on during each year, so thank you. Right. Let's jump into the finished objects that I have completed since I recorded in November. And I've got one, two, three, four of those. First one is a pair of socks. I was knitting on these in the last episode. Aren't they gorgeous? So these are my tiny human knit socks. Um, the yarn is from Tiny Human Knits and it's the colourway denim overalls. And I um, cast on 60 stitches for these, which is my standard sock sort of numbering. I did a one by one rib. I can't remember if that's a twisted rib or a one by one, just a plain one by one, I'm not sure. Uh, and then I knit um, a hundred, about 140 rounds until I got to the toe, did a wedge toe, and then I did an afterthought heel. And in my last, my last but one episode, I'd asked, um, I'd asked you for some help on picking the uh, heel colour out, and unanimously you went for the right, the right sort of clarity colour. It works beautifully in that pair of socks, I think. Really happy with these. They fit really nicely. I haven't knit a sort of standard wedge um, afterthought heel for many years actually. I've, I've, I've knit a few umbrella afterthought heels, um, but this was the first sort of wedge afterthought heel. And I was a little bit dubious about how it would fit, but it actually fits really nicely. Um, I was testing it out yesterday to see what I thought. Uh, yeah, really happy. With that, so it's it's quite I quite enjoyed knitting my socks this way. So I might knit some more in excuse me in this style. Um, the final pair of socks weighs seventy two grams, so that was a, a good chunk of the yarn used up, um, and I'll use the the other quarter of the yarn in scrappy projects, I suppose. And I finish those. Um, just after Christmas, as I did with these ones. Oops, I've got notes for all of my different projects here, so if you hear paper rustling, that's what it is. Right, second set of, second pair of finished socks, pink socks, that'll be a surprise for you. I don't often knit in pink, um, but I have quite a lot of pink bits and bobs in my minis jar and I thought let's just use a lot of them in a pair of socks. Um, I will probably never wear a pair of um, pink on my body, on my head, I just it's not my colour but on feet I'm very happy to wear pink. So um, I cast on 60 stitches with these socks as well and went straight into, I don't know, don't know if you'll see, yes you will, went straight into a five by one rib and I knit five by one rib down to the heel flap, did a heel flap and gusset, and gusset decreases and then knit um, down to the toe and I did a wedge toe and I used the same colour yarn for the heel and the toe. Um, I did a slip stitch heel with a garter edging and I, I like the way that that looks. Um, I did about 70 rounds from cast onto the heel as well, so they're quite a nice symmetrical symmetrical sock. This pair of socks weighs 64 grams, which surprises me actually. I would have thought these socks, I would have thought these socks had more knitting in them than these socks, but these socks weigh more than these socks. And it's the same, the yarn is the same, it's the same sort of standard um, 400 yards, 
to 100 grams type, you know, standard sock yarn. So, yeah, not quite sure about that. Because they, they, um, they measure the same, they measure the same from cast on to cast off. There's something there that I'm missing. <laughs> Um, just yeah, interests me. Um, to deal with the ends in this scrappy pair of socks, I use the clasp weft join method of joining yarn. So there was no um, no ends to weave in at the end, apart from um, at the very end of the toe and at the very beginning of the cast on. And I don't know if you'll see. I'll sh I always do when I when I join yarn in socks I always do them on the back of the um, leg and underneath uh, on the sole of the foot and in places it's a little bit bobbly and you can tell but um, you don't feel it when you walk on it um, and you um, in fact I can't see it on the well, I can see it in a couple of places on the back of the leg, but hey, who's going to be watching the back of my calf as I'm walking? <laughs> anyway, so two pairs of finished socks uh, for this episode. They're both fabulous, aren't they? I have got another pair of socks on the go, but um, I'm not going to be working on those over the next couple of weeks. Um, but when I work on them again, I will talk about them with you. Okay. I finished those pink socks um, on the 30th of December, so they just snuck in um, to my knitting at the end of the year. I completed all my projects by the end of the year, with the exception of my bits and bobs blanket. Um, but as we know, blankets don't count, do they? Um, so when I started, when, when um, New Year struck in 2023, um, I had a clean slate and cast on a handful of new projects and um, I'll share a couple of those with you later but anyway on to a couple more finished objects the next one is a project that I shared with you in um, the last episode and it's my Sophie scarf this is my second Sophie scarf I think find it two or three. I think this is my second. Or is it my third? Anyway, it doesn't matter. It's another Sophie scarf. Um, most of you will have heard of the Sophie scarf. It's a pattern by Petite Knit. And it's a very simple, straightforward, um, garter stitch little scarf. There's a couple of patterns out now. One is the Sophie scarf, which in the, the pattern, am I in focus? The, the original Sophie scarf pattern calls for DK weight yarn and um, you use about 50 grams of that, I think. Um, and she's not long brought out a shawl pattern, which is much bigger. I've gone for this one somewhere in the middle and I used all but two grams of a 100 skein of fingering weight yarn. I was just curious to see what that would get me. Um, the yarn, let me tell you about this beautiful yarn. This is um, a skein of yarn from Biff Sugar Yarns. Have I got the... Um, I've got the ball band here somewhere, bear with me. There we go. Biff Sugar Yarns. Um, Alison has uh, an Etsy shop and I'll put the details down below. This is 100% Superwash Merino Single, sorry I've got hair. 100% Superwash Merino Single Ply Fingering Weight, 100 grams in the colourway Demelza. And um, you get 366 metres to 100 grams. It's an absolutely stunning skein of yarn. I love it. And I was really pleased to be able to use all of it, pretty much all of it, in one project. So for those of you um, who don't know the Sophie Scarf, 
you cast on at one end and you do some increases until you get to a midpoint and then you start decreasing until you cast off at the other end. It's such a straightforward pattern. It has a lovely um, uh, eye cord edge on both sides, which I really like that in a pattern. That is one of my favourite sort of finishes um, for uh, a piece of knitting. Just makes it look really um, finished, I suppose is the word. Um, so what I did with this, I cast on, I knit until I had about 40, oh no, until I had about 52 grams of yarn left, um, just to give me a bit of um, leeway in case my tension changed at the other end of the scarf, not that it should, um, and then I started decreasing, and as I said, I used 98 grams of yarn. Um, I like this length of Sophie scarf. It wraps around three times and just a nice little knot there and uh, yeah it keeps me nice and nice and cosy. So I think it's a really good use of a special skein of yarn. I do like it. Anyway I'm going to take it off. It's interesting, I was looking on Ravelry the other day, just as you do, just browsing the pattern, seeing what's popular at the moment, and I've noticed a lot of um, very similar patterns. I'm sure they've all got slight differences. It might be you know, different edges or something, um, but there's a lot of very um, simple, straightforward style probably one skein projects that look a little bit like the Sophie scarf and I'm absolutely um, fully aware that um, Petite Knit will not have um, been the first person to um, come up with this sort of style of pattern but her pattern has just, um, it's really grabbed the attention of knitters. Um, so yeah, anyway, I really like that. I suspect I will make um, some more Sophie scarves in the future. Um, they're nice sort of palette cleansers in between bigger projects. Right, that's the Sophie scarf. And my final finished object um, is this lovely thing. So this is the Yume sweater, patterned by Isabel Kramer. It was um, very generously gifted to me by lovely Caroline. Thank you again, Caroline, I really appreciate that. Um, I was knitting this in my last episode and I cast this off on Boxing Day. Knit out of my um, favourite drops, Nord, in colourway 04, which is, um, I think it's their second darkest grey. Um, the, the sweater I knit size Four, and it weighs 298 grams so I got this in under six balls of yarn. The, the drop snort comes in 50 gram balls and I think it's 106, 170 grams, 100, sorry 170 meters, 160 meters per 50 gram ball, something like that. So I think it's sort of a sport weight um, weight of yarn. My gauge while knitting was slightly smaller, so um, my the, the fit is slightly um, less ease than the, the pattern should be for my size, but actually I quite like it. I really like the fit of the arms. They're very fit, similar to the fit of my stripes arms, and I really like that. Um, it has this beautiful lace, very simple lace work yoke, um, and um, it has an unfinished neckline, so I really like that. You just literally, you don't have to worry about the ribbed neckband, you go straight into the knitting. Um, so that really appealed to me. Um, and I think you could do, now I've got this pattern, um, you could actually do quite a lot with this as a sort of a basic sweater um, recipe. So there's a there's a thought for future knitting. Um, 
I did the Italian bind off for both the, the cuffs and the hem at the bottom. That took a long time, but it's really worth it. The Italian bind off, um, I don't know how much you'll be able to see, but it gives a really nice stretchy, um, smart finish to, um, to a bind off. So yeah, lots of good stuff about that. If I just stand up, um, you can see I sort of knit it to, oh, let me move my chair out of the way, knit it to um, mid-hip length and it has this lovely faux um, seam up both, up both sides. The pattern does have the seam going up the arm as well but I decided not to do that. So yeah, really happy with this. I like this fit on me. Um, this is my first Isabel Kramer pattern, I think, and um, really nice, well-written pattern, so I will definitely be making some more of her sweaters going forwards. Okay, on to the... Um, Two pat the two projects that I'm going to be working on uh, for the next couple of weeks before I record again. Um, keeping both of these, let me show you these, keeping both of them in project bags that I have made, testing out a different size of project bags. I've made these over the last couple of weeks in fabric, sadly, that I can't sell in my shop. Um, the designer of this fabric doesn't um, allow um, sort of commercial use for their fabrics, which is a real shame because it's beautiful fabric. But anyway, so slightly different sizes of bags. This is, <clears throat> this is my midi size bag. It's got a slightly bigger bottom than um, my current midi size. And this is my XL and it's got a huge bottom. <laughs> anyway, not going to talk about bags just now. <coughs> Excuse me. Right. The first project that I'm going to be working on over the next couple of weeks is um, a project called the Marling, Marling Festival. Um, if you bear with me, I will go and find a picture of it. Okay, back. Right. I hope you'll be able to see this. So this is the Marling Festival shawl. It's... Um, a pattern by Annie Knits, who is Annie Kopatz. Um, but she, I think she's known as Annie Knits on Ravelry and Instagram. I'll put the details in the description box. It's basically a large brioche and garter um, wrap. Um, and the idea is that you hold um, a skein of yarn or two, it, it's DK weight. So you can either knit it in DK weight yarn or you can hold two fingering weight yarns um, together and knit at the same time. I am knitting mine out of my beautiful Sherry Iris Advent calendar from the end of last year, along with um, some um, solid, um, well actually I started with a solid grey and I've gone on to a solid white. Uh, for reasons that I will explain next time. But that's that's the progress that I've made so far. I cast this on um, just a few days ago and it's really addictive knitting. So I've really been enjoying this. I'm not going to talk in detail about it, but I will show you the yarn that I'm currently working with from, um, from my advent, which is this beautiful little mini. And I'm holding it double with that. That's just a plain, I think that's milk bottle from West Yorkshire Spinners. Ooh. Just had to stop there for um, a little coughing fit. Uh, anyway, I will talk more about this um, next time I record, but I'm going to be working. Oh, and now there's a knock at the door. Hang on. Oh, that was exciting. That was an interfacing delivery for my, um, for my fabric. Um, anyway, so Marling Festival to be discussed further in the next episode. And then the other pattern that I'm going to be working on uh, is another new cast on. I am knitting it out of Lovely Let Lopey. This is in the colourway 
0086 and it's this gorgeous oatmeal-y type colour. I have been wanting to knit an oatmeal-y sweater for the longest time and um, I am doing so. Just show you very briefly, um, I am knitting the Felix pullover pattern by Amy Christoffers. I have knit one of these before and wear, wear it all the time. I knit it in a sort of rust colour, again from Let Lopi. Um, so I know that I'm going to get a lovely lot of wear out of this. Well, you can see it a bit better like that. The Felix sweater I think is probably synonymous with these raglan increases. Uh, but I have, as you can see, I've split for the sleeves, I'm working down the body and I'm hopeful to get quite a lot of that knit in the next couple of weeks. So I will talk more about it next time I record. Okay, that's it for the knitting. Um, it's been a slightly longer episode than the ones I'm planning going forwards. Um, in future episodes, I will talk about the books that I'm reading um, and any books that I've finished since I last recorded. Um, I will also talk about shop updates. I will just touch very briefly on um, what's going on with the shop at the moment. I'm currently prepping for a new, um, uh, some new bags for an update in about a month's time. So I've got some new fabrics to share with you and I'll, I'll show you those um, in uh, again in future episodes as they are made. They're all cut out at the moment. Um, I have been updating, or not updating, topping up the made to order options on um, bags that are currently in the shop. Um, I've got a little bit of availability for um, making made to order bags at the moment. Um, so if there is a bag that you see on my website that is sold out um, and doesn't have a made to order any made to order availability, drop me a line if you if there's one that you'd like and I will um, probably be able to add some uh, more available slots in. Does that make sense? The the only um, fabric that I'm not going to do that is with my sheet fabrics. I actually only have one or two panels of the sheet available at the moment so I'm not going to be um, including those in um, the next update I don't think I don't think I can get any more at the moment but if there are other bags that you've got your eye on um, let me know and I can probably um, if, if I've got the availability if I've got the fabric and I've got the time I can um, add in a, a made to order slot for you I hope that made sense um, if it didn't and you're keen for a bag, just get in touch. Anyway, that is all I'm going to talk about today. So thank you ever so much for watching. Don't forget to like the video and subscribe to the channel if you want to see more of my chit chat about knitting and so on. Um, I look forward to coming back more regularly. So I have been putting um, diary reminders in my diary for the next few weeks um, so that I can get into the into the routine of recording on a Friday. Leave me a comment. I love reading your comments about what you're working on, where you're recording from, uh, where you're watching from. I was very excited to read in the comments um, recently that um, one of you is watching in Vanuatu, which just blew my mind. Um, I can't remember your name, I'm really sorry, um, but you were crocheting in front of a fan on Va in Vanuatu. I just think that's brilliant. And I, I, wonder if I, I wonder if I win the prize for the, the podcast that's got the viewer furthest away. Um, let me know also if you've got any knitting plans for 2023. I don't really, I'm just going to, I suppose I want to knit thoughtfully which is kind of what I do anyway um, I want to use as much as as much of my stash as I possibly can but I am um, not ruling out any purchases I don't really do um, yarn diets that sort of thing I'm not really into that um, but I would like to use my stash because I sorted it out recently and I've got some really nice skeins the trouble is I did that thing when you're uh, um, when you first get into knitting and you discover hand dyed yarn 
and I went out and I bought all the single skeins. So I've got so many one-off skeins. Um, you know, I could have I could have 50 Sophie scarves because they're all that lovely, beautiful yarn that I would really like to show off. Um, so I have to give some thought for that. I'd like to combine them into bigger projects, into sweaters and things. Anyway, um, I'm going to um, say goodbye for now. I will see you again in a couple of weeks. Um, thank you for watching and take care. Goodbye.